over this place. Come on, sing it out. El Shaddai. El Shaddai. He's our prince. Lord of lords, you are my father, 
You are worthy to be praised. Come on, tell him. Come on, tell him. Let it come out of your heart. Come on, let it flow out of your mouth right now. Come on, tell him. You're worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. Oh, you're worthy to be praised. Yes. Praise you, Jesus.
doors fling wide, see glory as I run inside the throne room before you. I bow. The veil is torn, the doors fling wide, see glory as I run. Welcome to our mid-service. Yes, Worship yes. just wrapped up, and maybe you're just joining us. And in case that's the truth, my name's Connor. And I'm Libby. And we are so excited to be here with you guys at Church on Fire Online, and we're glad that you're joining us. 
Yes. And if you're new here, this is your first time watching, maybe you've watched before one or two times, First of all, welcome. If you want to do us a favor and text the word connect, I tried to spell it <laughs> <laughs> before the service and I'm not going to spell it again. Text the word connect to 513-268-0756. This will just give us an opportunity to say hey to you, get to know you a little bit, and you get to know us a little bit. Yeah, and I've been told that there's a real person on the other side of that line. Yes, so you're not just going to get robot. Yeah, you're not just going to get automated messages. Like I get enough of those like have you, oh, have you ever heard of Dr. Squatch, thing. like you know the soap yes, company? Yes. Every day they're like man you want to buy a new bar of soap and i'm like i'm good we're not i'm gonna good do that to you. we're not going to do that no. to you but we are going to meet you yes. and we are going to get to know you yes. um but in our church we have some core values yes, and they are important to us because it really feels like um what the lord established through pastor doug our head pastor and what he really wants to see our church do and one of those core values is evangelism yes. all right which can be a very like big and i feel like intimidating word yeah. but yeah. i think we want to just break that down for you guys and kind of explain why that's a core values core value of ours yes and also what it really means so what that means for our church is that we will do anything short of sin to reach people that don't know christ and then there's a second part that to reach people that no one is reaching we have to do things that no one is doing right and i think a lot of times in our lives it can be hard to like really understand what that means because like we said earlier we support missionaries in other countries yeah. and it's easy to think about that and be like oh like they're digging wells or they're reaching people who have never heard the gospel or and you may be thinking well, I'm, I'm just going to my work, but your work is a missions field. Right, right. And Everywhere you go is definitely. a missions field. Exactly. Definitely. And I do want to encourage you. I want to share this scripture. It's Matthew 28, 19 through 20. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you to the very end of the age. That's just super encouraging to me because I'm just like, I'm not doing it alone. Right. It's not me. Yeah. It's me and the Holy Spirit everywhere yeah. I go. So, I don't know. That's just that's really that's good. That's really big to me. And I honestly can say, like, this has changed my life, too. Like, yeah. really, because that's called the Great Commission. And this was Jesus' right. last instruction to his disciples. But then all who would follow, too. And I think if we just take a minute and maybe share some ways that we've tried to live this out. Or even if right. we haven't consistently, because it was a newer thing for me, like, how we plan to. And I think one for me has just been being purposeful in my job. Yeah, and trying exactly. to really engage with people because um, I work in a secular job field and just really trying to engage with them and teach them. And then even like, I feel like buying the person's coffee behind you yeah. and just taking that extra just step. Just the little things Just like the that. little things. Just exactly. to spread the love of Christ. And then in those moments when they're like, man, like what's different about you? And like right. taking that window. And I found that listening first yeah. to the other person really opens them up. So I think just living purposefully is a big one. Yeah. And I mean, our, our motto at the church is we love people. Right. And I think it's just right. it's just the little things of just showing people that you love them and you genuinely care about them. It's it's all the Great Commission. You yeah. know? You're know, you here for people. So um, one thing that I do want to transition to and hit on that we did hit on before service is, once again, our giving. Yeah. We just want to thank you so, so, so much for giving Definitely. Uh, to this church. If... Um, if you want to give today, we want to give you that opportunity to do that by going to mycfm.info or just using the Pushpay app. But not only are you funding, you know, the weekly farmer's market that we have, which, by the way, we fed like close to 500 so families. Crazy. We will hit 500 so families. Crazy. But you're also funding the families in Papua New Guinea. Right. And yeah. Yeah. And now that. we're about to jump into our sermon. So if you want the notes, go to yes. version, And we're about to hear a word from Pastor Doug. So make sure you lock in and see what the Holy Spirit's saying to you. Yep. All right, good morning. Good morning, everybody. That's where you respond. Good morning. Want to welcome everybody who's online. Thanks for joining us. And in a second, everybody will sit down so you can see. Thanks for being here. Glad you're here. All right. I was greeting this morning. Yes, I was. And I've had three cups of coffee and I got a little crazy out there. So um, if you want to be a greeter, if you're interested in being a greeter, we need greeters. We'd love to have you be a greeter. It's simple. You just say hi. Good morning. Welcome to Church on Fire. You can go to mycfm.info. We'd love to have you be a greeter. Okay? Look at somebody and say, boy, you need to be a greeter. You look good. <laughs> Tell them you look good. Then say this. Say this. For what you got to work with. Tell them that, so, all right. Hey, let, let me just say this. Thank you for giving, guys. It's so, it's so awesome that you give. 
and you look, we will not pass offering plates by, but we do receive offerings. You can go to the boxes on the wall, or you can go to mycfm.info. Karen and I use PushPay. Guys, as we move forward and the economy is doing what it's doing, we've, we gave more food this Wednesday than we've ever given. Yeah, and that's awesome. <laughs> but guess what? Food's getting more expensive. Lisa showed me. And uh, Casey, who just led that last song, is over our feeding. I think 475 families came through and received enough food for the week. So um, it's because of your giving, all right? Celebrate Recovery Tuesday nights having 100, 125 people. Uh huh. Thousands are coming. Lord forgive her because she just lied. But there are, you're, you're, you're prophesying, you're, prophesying. you're yeah. prophesying. Okay, and then, I'm kidding, I'm believing. All right, and then student ministries, um, um, women of alabaster, lit, all kinds of things are going on, guys. Thank you for your giving. Small groups, we've, we've got pushing 70 small groups right now, and, and, and that's awesome. Circles are better than rows. Okay. We're starting a series called Fight Club. I don't know how long it will go. I sent a thing out and I said five weeks. It may be less than that. But um, I really feel, and I'll share with you in a second, what I feel like the Lord has said to me that um, we need to pray. That should have been like the biggest amen of the morning. So let me, let me give you the title. How do you expect me to pray when I don't know how? How many have ever said, hey, I told my wife this one time, I'm, I'm going in the basement and I'm praying for an hour. About three minutes later, I come back up and I'm, I couldn't think of anything else to say. Anybody ever done that? Okay, I'm going to teach you how to pray. So let's pray. I'll pray. And then we'll get into the word. And let me just say thank you for all the guests. I'm so glad you're here. I met a bunch out there. I'm going to start greeting every week. And so, um, boy, keep coming back. Just pray the Lord touches you. If you're on a journey and you're on a search, hey, I love to have coffee with people and just talk and you can ask questions. So, and then at the end, I'll stand down here if you want to come up and, and say hi. So, all right, Lord, I thank you that you said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. You also said, I'm going I'm to leave my word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. It's what your word says. James 1, 21 says, receive with meekness the engrafted word. So we, we receive what you're saying this morning. Psalm 119, 11 says, I will hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119, 105 says, I will make your word a lamp into my feet and a light into my path, my spiritual GPS. And James 1, I will leave here today and be a doer of your word and not hearer only. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Now listen, I don't have the first idea how to cook. How many in this room, maybe mostly guys, but um, is that some guys really know how to cook, but I don't, okay? How many people do you just like, I do not know how to cook? And husbands, if you raise your hand, you're in trouble. I don't know how to cook. If Karen goes away, this is what I live on. Cocoa Puffs, Frosted Flakes, and Peanut Butter and Jelly. But my wife, she can cook. She can cook. And guess who else can cook? My daughters can cook. They can cook. And when Karen leaves and I don't, have, I don't know how to cook, I eat Cocoa Puffs, Frosted Flakes, and Peanut Butter and Jelly because my daughters don't cook for me. Just saying. So, yes, they do. I, I love, well, we used to. We ain't no more. All right. So here's, here's the model. And we do this at the church, but, and it works in business. This is the model of how to learn. I cook, you watch. We cook together. You cook, I watch, then you cook. Let's do it again. I cook, you watch. We cook together, you cook I watch, then you cook. That's the model of teaching. So I'm going to teach how to pray. And each week we're going to take two sections 
and we're going to do it. We're going to pray, okay? Oh, Lord, why did I come here? So if there's ever an hour that we need to pray, it's now. So let me share what I feel like the Lord spoke to me. I woke up, it was three in the morning. It was about two weeks ago. I told staff this. I woke up and I felt like the Lord said, you will see the fires of revival. So I got up in the morning to read the word, six o'clock. I'm sitting there and I felt like the Lord said it again. You will see the fires of revival, meaning you're going to see people come to know the Lord and those that have went away are going to come to the Lord, come back to him. So maybe that's against your theology, whatever. We're going to see the, the fires of revival. So I, and my first thought was, that's just me thinking it. That's just me thinking it. How many have ever felt something and you go, that's just me thinking it. The next morning I got up and I'm reading the word and I felt like the Lord said to me, I know you think it's just you thinking it, but I'm telling you, you're going to see the fires of revival. You are going to see people come to the Lord. And as it gets darker in the world, how many could imagine a year or two ago we would be at the place we are right now? Not me. I'm like, what's going on? And as it gets darker, people who know Christ shine brighter. Listen, and they're going to find you and say, please, I see and know that you know the Lord. Tell me, tell me what's going on. Tell me what's going on. Show me what's going on. So everybody who's with me and is hearing what I'm saying, say amen. Amen. Maybe you don't get it, but I'm telling you, listen to me. I felt the Lord say, I've been saying this for years. The day is coming when people are going to run here. I remember before when people came here really searching, when difficult times hit, they're they're coming. And they're going to come to you at work, and they're going to come to you as a neighbor, and they're going to come to you. Okay, so the disciples watched Jesus pray. They saw him pray. I'll show you in Luke 11, Luke, Luke 11, 1. And, and we're, we're going to talk the Lord's Prayer. So Luke 11, 1 and Matthew 6 are where you find the Lord's Prayer. But now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Lord, teach us to pray as John taught the disciples. And then he gave them a pattern for prayer. So... Um, Like I said, so you can remember this, the Lord's Prayer is in Luke 11 and Matthew 6. So you can remember, where's the Lord's Prayer? Luke 11, 1, then he goes into the Lord's Prayer, but let's let's use Matthew 6. I'm putting it on the screen now, okay? So I want us to say it together, and I want it to say it together loudly so that our neighbor can hear us saying it. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. But deliver us from evil For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good job. Good job. Look at somebody tell them. Good job. Online, good job. All right. Now listen. Point one. You are talking to your father when you pray and he hears you. You are talking to your father when you pray and he hears you. Let's put this up there. It's often hypothesized that one must expound with exquisite and elegant dialogue when you convey what you have cont- contemplatively excogitated to his majesty's eminence. Okay, I sat with staff and we wrote that because that's how we feel. Boy, I have to. 
I have to wax eloquent when I pray. I have to sound really good. How many know our Father in heaven isn't saying, well, that didn't sound very good, so I'm not going to let. No, he's listening when you pray. So you have to change your mindset that he is listening to you when you pray. And some of us have a problem because we compare our heavenly father with our earthly father. And many of us didn't have a, a, a um, awesome father. So we said, well, this is how my earthly father is. My heavenly father uh, must be like that too. No, he is gracious, kind, loving, caring, forgiving, generous. That's the kind of father we have. So here's what James says in James 5, 17 through 18. Now look at what, look what this says. So you don't have to think you have to wax eloquent and have a master's degree in prayerology. James 5, 17. The prayer of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. Elijah, for instance, human just like us. Listen, Elijah, for instance, human just like us, prayed hard that it wouldn't rain and it didn't. Not a drop for three and a half years. Then he prayed that it would rain and it did. The showers came and everything started growing again. Elijah was a man just like us or a woman you, it's not gender specific. Men and women are heard when they pray to God. So again, your father hears you when you pray. Now I'm going to show you something. I love Nat Geo. I love Animal Planet. I love animal shows. How many like animal shows? I like that and I like rebuilding car shows. That's, I lo- that's all I watch. Uh, what do you want to watch tonight? Well, Animal Planet, animal shows. The largest migration of any animal in the world is the wildebeest. One to two million of them migrate across the plains of the Serengeti. It's crazy. And the cool part is when they start crossing the river and the alligators are, that's cool too, like they're trying to get away. I love it. Like, jump, man, run, run. So I want to show you this, this part of the migration. When you turn the volume up, okay, play this. Hold on. That's just part of them. Okay, let's pause it. Stop it. Okay, so just leave that just for a second. They'll show a baby that gets separated from its mom, and that little baby, will the beast will go, meh. And that mama, mama's like, where's my baby? And they're making that noise. And mama says, oh, I hear my baby. I hear that baby. Where's my baby? I hear my baby. Well, don't you hear all the others? Oh, yeah, I hear them too, but I hear my baby. How many know you are the Lord's baby? And he says, I hear you when you pray. Okay, you can take that down. my, My grandsons play football on Saturday or Friday night or Saturday morning. They know when Papa whistles. And they know they better turn around. I'll, I'll whistle. I'll, I'll be like, and, and there's people yelling, whoa, whoa. And I'll go, and they'll look up at me. I'll go. I do. They look at me. Listen, he hears you when you pray. Please listen. But he can't hear you if you don't pray. So let let me read a scripture. I just finished the book of Isaiah this morning. I was reading this this morning. I was like, whoa, that would be great for this message. The Lord says, I was ready to respond, but no one asked for help. I was ready to be found, but no one was looking for me. And I said, here I am, here I am to a nation that did not call my name. It is time for this nation And people that know God and people of the world to start saying, God, we need you. We need your help. We need your help. We need your help. We need you. So when he said, pray the Lord's prayer, when he said, here's how you should pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. He was giving us more than just repeating that T 
ten times as fast as we can. You hear what I'm saying? So Karen and I became youth pastors at a church. You may not know this. Some of you don't. You're new here. We were youth pastors for 18 years before we started this church with the blessing of the pastor that we were working with in Georgia. He blessed us and, and sent us here but, um, to start the church. But before that, I went to a church downtown on Central Parkway next door to the Frishes there. There's a church there. And we were youth pastors. And my room, they were building a new gym and some offices. Well, when they sent me there, I went in. They sent me in this teeny tiny room where they duplicated tapes. Tapes, <laughs> students, cassette tapes. How many do not know? How many students do not know what a cassette tape is? Does anybody not know? Okay, good. Anybody not know what an A-track is? Anybody not know what a record is? Okay. So they sent me in this room, and that was my room, and I found this thing, and it said, Could You Not Tarry One Hour by Larry Lee? And I'm like, man, I'm going to listen to this. It's on prayer. And I started to listen to it, and it changed my life. So it's a pattern that we follow. So let, let me put point two. You start with worship. You always start with worship. Always. Always start with worship. So Psalm 100, verse 4. I will enter his gates with what? And go into his courts with... Give thanks to him and praise his name. Let's do it again. I will enter his gates with, I will come into his courts with, be thankful unto him and bless his name, or give thanks to him and praise his name. So, so um, that's how the, Lord pray, the Lord's prayer starts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Moses said, who should I tell him is sending me? He said, say, I am that I am is sending you. He didn't say this to Moses, but he, at points he said, I'm God and I don't change. He is whatever we need him to be when he, we need him to be that for us. Are you hearing me? It's not like he's a genie in the lamp and I rub the lamp and I get three wishes. He said, listen, I was there to answer your prayer, but you didn't answer, or you didn't ask. I was there for you, but nobody sought me. So he says, here's how you pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So this is what I do in the morning. After I read scripture, I put music on, this music. I've told you this over and over and over. But I'll sit and I'll start going, Father, Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross to forgive me of my sins. God, I thank you so much for sending your son. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you that my sins are gone. I thank you today, Father, that I have soundness of mind. I thank you today, Father, that you're giving me wisdom. I thank you today, Father, that everything I put my hand to do because of you will prosper. I thank you that you're my healer. I thank you that you're my protector and you're the protector of my family. You guys with me? How hard is that to do? Is that hard to do? Is that hard to do? No. So I think we're going to put that on the screen. Is it up there? We got it? Okay. All right, you ready? You don't have to yell. I don't yell in the morning. If I did, I'd be moving in with you because my wife sleeps in the morning. I just sit there. I got a blanket over me. I got a coffee. My dog's laying there. I've read the word for 30, 45 minutes. And I start saying this. So you ready? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So let's do this, okay? Ready? Come on. Can't do it without opening your mouth. All right? So let's just start doing it. Ready? Go ahead. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son. 
second and think of your own Lord I thank you for a home to live in and food to eat come on you're by yourself come on I know this is probably stretching you but I want us to practice we're doing it together this isn't embarrassing you're learning and at the end I'm going to give you this pattern so do it just for a second thank you Lord thank you Lord that I'm healthy thank you Lord thank you Lord that, that you've given me vehicles to drive and you you bless me i have food to eat lord i thank you i thank you for two wonderful wonderful daughters i thank you for my wife i thank you for karen i thank you for her boldness and i thank you for her discerning spirit i thank you for my five grandkids and, and uh, i thank you for for them i thank you lord Thank you for your protection. I really feel like some of us need to say that. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your love for me. You're a good father. You're generous and caring and loving. You're not angry. You're loving. You're the greatest father anyone could ever have. I thank you for that. How many think you could do that on your own while you're driving your car, while you're cutting grass, while you're sitting in a chair, while you're, you're at work? How many think you can do that? I can do that. So that's the, that, that's the first step. So you start with worship, but then you understand that our Father has a plan for our life. So He says in Matthew 6.10, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So this morning I texted all my grandkids and I said, I want all of you to know that I pray for you every day. I want you to know that I'm believing that each and every one of you will serve the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength all of your life. I'm also believing that when you find a guy or a girl, there'll be people that love the Lord as well. And you will together become this dynamo. And I text and I say, I love you so much, Papa. How many think that would be God's will for those kids? Huh? Yeah. So why don't I declare that? So when it, when it says your kingdom come and your will be done, you know what I do? I sit and I start with myself. Is it up there? Let's put it up there. Okay. I start with myself. I say, Lord, your kingdom come and your will be done in my life today. If, if you're a business person, Lord, guide my steps so I run into business or good employees. Lord, protect me as I drop my car or climb a tree or cut the grass. I ask you to be with me today, Father, in Jesus' name kingdom come and will be done in my life Lord your kingdom come and your will be done in my wife's life Karen but be with her today as she gets up this morning let her enjoy her hot tea and reading the Bible and sitting on the patio Lord just be with her your kingdom come and your will be done in her life protect her touch her health Lord then I go to my daughters and my son-in-law then I go to my grandkids I do it for my family Lord I have, I have family members outside that don't know you. I declare your kingdom come, your will be done, that they will know you. Lord, I pray for our staff. Your kingdom come and your will be done for our staff and for the people in this church. Lord, those that have asked me to pray, I pray for them right now. Lord, I ask you that your kingdom come and your will be done in this church. And then I go, Lord, touch our country. Your kingdom come and your will be done in our country. How many think we need to pray for our country? So you ready to practice? This is just you. Now just do it yourself. Just do it yourself. You can do it 
in your mind. It works better when you, you use your mouth. Let's start with yourself. You ready? Here we go. Start praying for yourself. Father, be in my life and help me, Lord. Direct my footsteps. Come on. Come on, do it. Touch me, Lord. Your kingdom come and your will be done in my life. Direct my footsteps, Lord. Protect me as I drive my car. Some of you may have a dangerous job. Lord, protect me on this dangerous job. Protect me. Now, let's, let, if, you're, if you have a spouse or someone you think you might marry, pray for them. Come on, Lord, open your mouth. Boy, th this would be great for your wife or your husband to hear you pray for them right now. Lord, I ask you to touch Karen. Even right now, Father, as she is getting ready to come to the next service or she's reading her Bible or she's sitting on the patio. Come on, pray. Come on. Touch my wife. Be with her. Touch her health. Be with her. If you have kids right now, come on. Lord, touch Lisa, Nikki, and Jimmy and Steve. Be with them, Father, I pray. In Jesus' name. Let their steps be ordered by you. Direct their steps. My, my four grandsons and my granddaughter and my two girls that are dating my grandsons. Protect them. Be with them. God, keep them in this hour and be with them, I pray. Lord, I pray you touch the people of this church. Be with them. Let them grow. Read your word and talk to you because you care, Lord. Touch this community. Keep us safe and protect us, I pray. Touch our law enforcement and our mayor and, and the firemen and our teachers and the people in this community and in Cincinnati and in Ohio. God, I pray. Come on, guys. Please touch our country. Touch this country. We believe in God the Father. We believe in God the Son. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Godhead three in one. Touch our country, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus is about to die on the cross, and here's what he says to his disciples in Matthew 26. 41. This is where could you not tarry one hour came from. He said, stay alert, be in prayer, so you don't wander into temptation without even knowing you're in danger. There is a part of you that is eager, ready for anything in God, but there's another part that's as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. I mean, sometimes you just feel lazy. I won't be honest. But we have to stay alert and stay in prayer and stay with the Lord. And so, how can I pray if I don't know how? I'm teaching you right now. Next week, we're going to go into, uh, Father, with thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Then we're going into a big one. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our debts. That's big. Okay? So, um, here's what I want, I want to do. I want you to reach on the end of your row. Some of you have it on one end, some on another. And I want you to get the communion and I want you to pass it down the row. Okay, and uh, Nick, I need one, please. If you're watching online, run to the kitchen, get some crackers or juice or something that will work for you. And let's do this together. But let me, let me first say this church some of you, do, you you don't pray because you don't know God you don't know him now look look at me we're almost done how do I know God number one I admit it I need him that's the first step right 
I need God. I need his help. I don't know him. I need him. I need God. So A, I admit it. B, I believe Jesus is the Christ. All through scripture he says, you must believe that Jesus is the Christ. You must believe that he died on the cross. Then you can know the Father. So I believe Jesus is the Christ. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he was buried. I believe he rose again to forgive me for my sins. See, I confess, I've sinned. Look at me. You may look and say, dude, you, you haven't said, oh boy, I have sinned. My wife has sinned. Everyone in this room has sinned. And if you say you haven't, 1 John says, you're lying. You're a liar. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The difference is saying, I confess, I admit it, I believe I confess that I've sinned. So we're going to pray a prayer like that, okay? Those of you who don't know God, I want you to pray that prayer. But here's the D. A, admit. B, believe. C, confess. D, be a doer of his word. First, uh, James 1, 22, be a doer. You didn't just raise your hand and say a prayer to go out and just be the old person. Repentance means I'm going this way, now I'm going this way. And brother, you will be in the fight of your life. I'm telling you, the devil will come, okay, come on, we've been doing this, let's keep doing it. It's what I read earlier. I said, you, you're eager to do this, but your flesh says no. So just bow your heads, put your hands out like this and just say, God, let's pray together. God, I admit it. I need you. God, I can't live this life without you. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you came to this earth, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified on the cross, buried in a grave, but you rose again and you did it for me to take away my sin. I confess, I've sinned a lot, more than most people know. Will you please forgive me? Will you wipe the slate of my life clean? Just like I was born again. Now I'm gonna leave here today, God. Come on, say it, I'm gonna leave here today and I'm gonna serve you. In Jesus' name. Now, we're going to receive communion. If you just gave your life to the Lord at the end, I want you to walk to that wall, and I want you to sign it. And we're going to give you something and get you on your path, okay? So let's take the bread. Let's hold it up, everybody. Jesus is sitting with his disciples, and he's about to be crucified. He's about to go to the garden where... He said, come on, guys, pray that you don't enter into temptation. But before that, he holds up a piece of bread. He says, guys, this is my body. It's broken for you. And they're like, what? The next day, just right away, they start hitting him, pulling his beard out, whipping him, punching him. Blood starts flowing, mocking him. He said, I'm doing this for you. And as often as you eat this bread, you do it remembering what I've done for you on the cross. So let's take this together. Then he held up a cup and he said, Guys, this is my blood spilled out for you. I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't know that the next day he would carry a cross through Jerusalem down the Via Della Rosa, blood dripping from his body. And he said, every drop that falls is for every person in humanity that ever sins. Ever. From this day forward as well, from this day back, he said, it's for you. How many thankful?
that he shed his blood so that we could have forgiveness of sins. Anybody? Yeah, me too. It's as often as you drink it, you do it in remembrance of me. So let's take the juice together. Thank you, Father, for dying on the, or Jesus for dying on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting the assignment and coming to be here on this earth for us. Thank you that our sins, though they are as scarlet, they should be as white as snow. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let's stand up. Our prayer team can come down. Um, this morning, if you need prayer, our prayer team would love to pray for you. You can walk down and they'll, they'll pray for you this morning. But this is what I do every week here. And I have so many people say, man. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really yeah. hope you got something out of that message. I know for a fact I did. Yeah, we're really, really glad good. that you're here, honestly. Yeah. And like joining us and sitting in with us. And, and what a great message, like yeah. you said. Dude, one point that he said that I was like, yes, is... God doesn't hear you if you don't pray. It's right. just, just talk to him. Yeah. He's always there. He's always listening. Definitely. And I think a lot of times we can get in our heads and we can overcomplicate it. Yeah. And I think it's the same thing with salvation sometimes, right? right? Like we can feel like before coming to Christ that we're far off and we have to figure it out and get our lives together. But hopefully some of you at home realize that that's not the truth. Yeah, it's and if simple. you are one of those people who made that life decision today, we really want to connect with you. Like we want to guide you because something that God calls us to is not just to spread his word, but to actually disciple people in their next steps. And yeah. our church has a system specifically set up for people like you to do that. So if you want to just text the word heart to 513-268- 0756 that would be amazing because we just want to journey with you yeah. and start this new life with christ that is honestly so exciting the bible even says that when one person gives their life to christ all of heaven throws rejoices. a party and just yes. rejoices and it's amazing yeah it's a really big decision this is the best day of your life you've made that decision for real so thank you again so much for joining us and we'll see you again next week at 9 30